When making an animated film, one big part is to create all the environments that it's set in. In my case, this is done through numerous paintings, backgrounds which I can draw and animate my characters into. Obviously, depending on the length of your film and the amount of shots it contains, the number of paintings will vary for each production. The film I'm currently working on has quite a lot of shots and many are set in an outdoor environment among boulders and mountains. For each change in camera angle, I would need to paint a separate painting representing those backgrounds. Now as much as I like and enjoy painting these backgrounds, if I can save time somewhere, I gladly do so. I want to show you a way that sometimes allows me to recycle elements from already painted backgrounds in my film and apply them to new shots. If you have watched some of my other videos, you might have seen me using a bit of 3D to elevate the amount of movement my camera can do in my painted backgrounds. This shot here is a painting projected onto some simple 3D geometry which allows me to make some interesting orbiting camera movements. It's not a fully textured 3D scene that works from every angle, but it would give me enough to break out from that flat world the 2D painting otherwise only were able to offer. I have a breakdown of how this shot was made on my Patreon if you're interested, and you can find a link to that below. Now I knew that I would need a few more shots of this same location, as a lot of my film is set around this place. One being a wide shot from a lower angle, so by creating a new virtual camera in this same 3D scene and reframing it, I could build my new layout here and still get to keep some of the painting from the previous angle. This specific stone is featured a lot in my film, as it's about rock climbing, and by recycling some of it in this way I can actually keep things relatively consistent between the shots. This obviously doesn't look very good at this point, but that will change. I then just render out a hardware render from my 3D software and use that as a base for my new painting. The three-dimensional mountains in the backgrounds were landscape objects within Cinema 4D, uh, which is the 3D software I'm using, that I placed out to create a nice composition. They only act as a reference at this point, and as you can see, gets covered up with the painted version in Photoshop. Here I'm recycling again from previous backgrounds I painted from other shots, but in a different way. Here I just take them from other paintings and slap them onto this one. To not make that too obvious and repeated throughout the film, I paint over these again and change things up. But having all these colors directly to start with saves me a lot of time. Who knows, the finished version of this shot might be raided for assets at the later stage when I create some of the other angles from the same scene. I spend some time rendering it out and cleaning things up. In this shot I am separating the far background and the boulders, so that I can later add some camera movement and parallax to it. This shot is also painted very flat in terms of lighting as my plan is to have an animated and changing lighting setup applied. I want to simulate a time-lapse effect where the clouds quickly animate across the sky, casting shadows onto the mountains as the shot plays out, uh, so I don't want to bake in any hard shadows in the painting at this point. As well as a time-lapse, I also wanted to cut between several weather conditions over different days, as the camera continuously orbits the shot. In the film this will act as a montage of my characters working the climbing project over an extended period of time. That's a reason to start with a very flat first painting that I can then alter in different versions to create overcast days, rainy and windy days, nighttime scenes and so on. This would be quite a fun shot to put together, and I'm sure I will make more videos about it, as it would require a lot of work. I 
I really enjoy finding shapes within the textures and elements that I'm painting. I'm not really aiming for realism here, but more a stylized way to render environments. I like a hint of a graphical touch, but not oversimplified either. I try to make the shapes pleasantly blend together, and instead of blending everything smoothly together with an airbrush, I let these somewhat triangular shapes do the job. They help to add dimensionality to the elements, and especially on the rocks I feel that they add a nice separation in the different surface planes. You could see me completely paint over the foreground stones here, but that doesn't mean I took them out of the shot. I still have them on a separate layer hidden above. I do this to fill in the information of what's behind them, so that we can see that later when the camera moves. In terms of layers here, I like to work as flat as I can. I definitely need to have the background and the foreground separated, but other than that, I like to merge down as much as possible. And if something isn't working, I'd rather repaint it than having to deal with a lot of layer management. This cleanup stage is always my favorite part of the painting. It's a very relaxed process that does take some time, but I don't really mind. In an upcoming video I will show you how I added foreground and a camera move to this shot, as well as how I animated the clouds to create this time-lapse effect. Stay tuned for that, remember to subscribe to the channel here, join my Patreon for more tutorial videos breaking down these methods in more detail. Uh, thanks to all of you who are already supporting me there, it's through your support that I can make these videos. I will see you guys in the next one, bye.